Big Ten country. Yeah. Now, when you took the gig in in 2020, was there any inkling in your mind that you might be taking over a Big Ten program? No, back no, then? you can't imagine that. You know, um, not at all. I, I just knew what UCLA was and what it represented, uh, but college athletics was changing so much. That's what I did know, and that was in the in the heart of the pandemic. It had just started, right, when I took the job. So uh, I had enough things that were that were on the plate right off the bat that. Uh, I wasn't even thinking about conference realignment. And so, you know, and you obviously have your roots in in the Big Ten in college athletics and in, in the athletic department. And again, uh, just pointing out, Chris and everyone else, t- testing my professionalism for having Martin here, Michigan State <laughs> Associate Athletic Director. And then, of course, he had some time uh, with O. SU. Th- I'm sorry, the Ohio State University. <laughs> um, so... You know the conference. Yeah, I mean, you know it very well. In the conference, yes, Yes. yeah, spent 15 years in the conference. um, Know the conference very well. Very competitive, high-level academic athletics. I'm very familiar with it. So, um, it was it was something that I was familiar with. So, when when did you first catch wind that this is a possibility, Martin? That you go to the Big Ten? What about that? You know, the thing that you start with, you always want to position your student athletes for success. Yes. And and I look at UCLA and our student athletes and what's going to give us the best opportunity to win big and compete big at the highest level. That's what our students deserve. That's what they come to UCLA for. Yes. They want that platform. And so looking at college athletics, um, it's very chaotic. You've got name, image, and likeness. You had the transfer portal starting. You had conference realignment, I, I believe in uh, July of 21 with, with Oklahoma and Texas. And so everything was shifting. And, and you kind of look at, okay, what's going to position us for whatever college athletics is looking like and where it's going? Yes. And that was, to me, that was the Big Ten. You know, there were too many positives about uh, competing that. One, from an exposure standpoint, uh, is significant. And that's for our student athletes. And now you're entering a name, image, and likeness era where brand and exposure and, and being able to showcase your skills and talents is big and you know being on the west coast you you know this like east coast you don't always see games if it's a late game east coast is not watching right and so now you're in an environment where you want to showcase your student athletes and their skills and and what is that platform that's going to be uh, available to them to, to show that so um those kind of things just got got us thinking like you know what uh, we need to really look at this thing and um and that was the time to do it and so uh, was it around the summer? Is that when it was or you know, sometime you, you earlier started, this year? You're always looking at it. You started right. probably uh, in the fall of, of, of 21 just thinking about things. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, things moved quickly later. Uh, but it was it was something that was always like in the back of your mind. Like, man, that that makes a lot of sense for different reasons. It was a fit academically and athletically in some of the institutions. Um, so to me, it, yes. it, it made sense. But it was a matter of I don't know if it can happen or not. And it was just a long process. Of course, uh, but it did come together really fast. So my question for you, if you're willing to share, was USC a partner in this? Like, were you, did, did was your participation in the Big Ten tied to USC's and they to yours in any way? No, they, they had their separate path. We, we both had separate paths. We were always thinking about UCLA. You know, from, from my yeah. standpoint, what makes sense for us? And as I, I learned more and we started learning more yes. and gathering information, it just made sense for us. So that was that was never – I was not in communication with them or, or we weren't uh, – mm-hmm. because when you do something like this, you're very focused. It, it's only a small uh, amount of people at all that are that are involved in something like this decision. So, um, you know, our chancellor was great and administration, and, and we just kind of moved forward, and it worked out. They took the vote, and it was unanimous. Right, and then it just – Happened to be like you just oh USC's coming too. I mean, was that how it was? I mean, you? it was towards the end. Yes, you, you got an idea, but it yeah. wasn't like something that was together the whole time. I mean, it it came together really fast at the end, and that's when yes. obviously you you were aware that they were um, applying for membership. Yes, and, and we were at the same time, but uh, but there was something at the end. How concerned are you that your games at the Rose Bowl? By the way which I, I covered games in the Rose Bowl for mm-hmm. Michigan. I love this facility. I want this facility. I'm, I'm upset, to be very honest, that they're, we're, we're going to see the national championship game in Los Angeles, in Southern California, and it's not at the Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I understand how beautiful SoFi is, and I love the people at SoFi, but, you know, I mean, the Rose Bowl in the San Diego Mountains. It is yeah, iconic. It's iconic. It is, but how concerned are you that it's going to be a road game for you? 
in the first couple of years, maybe in the Big Ten. World. As far as the stadium? Yes. No, just in terms of the fans. Oh, uh, that, you know, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. No, you know, you know our mean, fans have been great. You know, there, there are a lot of things early on in the season that you got to come back when you're when you're in the valley in Pasadena. You know, the heat was really hard. Yes. And but they, we had some fans there, and I appreciate those fans being there. Uh, you know, we don't start. We're on a quarter system, not a semester, so our students don't come until the third or fourth game yes. in school. So there are a lot of things that go into that, but uh, the reality is, once you you win and you have ex- good experience, fans come, and that's what they did the last game and last two games. So I'm excited about about the fans and and just where we're going and what we're doing. Well, obviously, what's going on right now is fantastic. Oh, it's awesome! It's awesome. And then you know your next game, if I'm not mistaken, it's a homecoming for Chip, right? <laughs> going up to Oregon and but but bringing a. a a team that's right on the cusp of top 10 has got to be. It's going to be a great game. I mean, Oregon's yeah. really talented. And, right. and I think Chip would tell you, you know, it's not about him. It's about our, our, our guys and their guys. And, you know, you're going to go for uh, 60 minutes and, and whoever the best is going to win. But it's, it's going to be electric. I've never been there with fans because two years ago uh-huh. we played there. Right. And uh, it was the I was the only one. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't any fans. So. I've heard it is like one of the best <laughs> yes. kind of atmospheres in the Pac-12, so we'll, we're excited about it. How much blowback are you getting about your decision going about your business in the Pac-12 this year, oh, Martin? You know, you know, I don't worry about that. Uh, when, when it's something like this, you do what's in the best interest of your students. You know, and in my heart of hearts, I know it's the right decision for us. Right. Um, a lot of UCLA people are excited. Uh, by and large, a majority of our student athletes are excited. Um, I've talked to over 200 student athletes. They're they're geeked about this. They're mm-hmm. pumped about it, mm-hmm. and and that's who I serve. So that's that's who I concern myself with. And so, um, you know, you, the outside noise you can you can get caught up in that. But when you know you're doing the right thing, mm-hmm. you sleep well. And and I do. And it's just about focusing now on preparation, getting ready. That's two years from now. Yes. So what do we need to do to make sure that when we get to the Big Ten? We're ready to compete at the highest level off the rip. When are you going to have – are you already in conversations about which division you're in or what's going no, on with this? We, we in football, obviously. Yeah, no, we haven't had those conversations yet. We're doing internal work. Right now we're looking at the Big Ten teams internally. We're having committees with student-athletes on it, with coaches, assessing where we stack up yes. in different resources-wise. So we'll do that, and then next year we'll start to look at really, okay – what does it look like in all of our sports as far as competition in the Big Ten? And what do we need to where we can go from day one and be successful and compete at the highest level? Sure. So we haven't had those conversations with the Big Ten yet. We're, we're really just kind of focused on our own work and then looking and assessing what the competition is. How do you put a schedule together, right? I mean, what's what are the challenges there? Well, right you got to have those decisions sooner than later. Yeah, I mean, obviously, right. like, yes. like football especially, but um, even basketball, you know, um, Signing day for football is, I think, December 23rd, and mm-hmm. uh, for the Olympic sports is, is uh, November 9th. So you got to start to, at some point in the next two months here, you got to have some clarity, hopefully, on scheduling and different parameters so that we can kind of put that stuff together. 